In this video, we're going to be talking about duality for planar graphs. So first, let's get the definition of an embedding. So an embedding of a graph G on a surface S is a drawing of G on S such that there are no edge crossings. Okay, so this is a sort of simplified version of the definition of embedding. <clears throat> um, and for us right now, the only surface we want to think about is the sphere or the plane, right? We discussed in the last video how those are basically the same. Um, so basically, it's a picture with no edge crossings. So, just as a for example, right, both of these graphs in purple represent K4, right, this is K4, this is K4, every vertex is adjacent to every other vertex, there are no edge crossings in this picture, there are no edge crossings in this picture, these are both embeddings, right, and in terms of surfaces, we should really be thinking about the sphere, but we can really think of it as a plane, right, I mean, it's fine to say it's a planar embedding. Okay, so that's an embedding. And it turns out that every planar embedding of a graph can be used to construct a dual graph. And we denote the dual with an asterisk. Um, so let's see how to do this. So find G dual for G below. So we've got a couple, we've got this graph and we've got a couple more um, coming up. <clears throat> so we've got this graph and the way you construct the dual, first we want to think about the faces of a particular embedding. So the faces here are enclosed regions or bounded regions, um, and we want to include the infinite face as well. Okay, so a face, you can imagine that um, if you sort of had a circle made of something stretchy, you could sort of stretch the circle to fill up a, f a space. So like F1 is a, is a face and F2 is a face, and F3 is, well, I guess the circle analogy doesn't work so great for F3, but essentially it's just a bounded region or a closed region uh, in the picture. Okay, so hopefully that's clear enough to understand what we're looking for here. Um, and the faces of a given embedding correspond to vertices in the dual graph. So I'm going to mark with asterisks here at first. These are going to be the vertices of our new graph. And then every edge is going to correspond to a new edge. So here in green, this green edge separates these two faces. And for any embedding, right, that edge is going to separate two faces. Like this edge separates these two faces. This edge separates these two faces. This edge separates these two faces, and so on. So every edge separates two faces, and in the dual, you want to connect the two corresponding vertices. So like this edge in green makes this edge in black, or this edge in green makes this edge in black. This edge in green, because it separates this face and this face, right? It's going to give us this edge. This one's going to give us this edge. This one's going to give us this edge. So basically what we've got in black here is the dual graph, but you want to clean it up a little bit because this is not very clear what's happening. So basically, if we think about this triangle, right, where that's this, these three edges, and then these ones on the outside have an extra parallel edge, right? So this and this are parallel edges, just like this and this are parallel edges. And in fact, anytime you have a degree 2 vertex like this, that's always going to result in parallel edges in the dual. Okay, so this is the dual graph. Okay, so let's try another one. Let's try this one here in pink. So you might want to pause the video and try um, this one yourself. Okay, so again, we want to put a vertex in every face. So here we've got this face, this face, this face this face, this one, and this one, and then the infinite face. And then every time there's an edge, right, that's going to correspond to a new edge. So this edge separates these two faces, so we put an edge there. This edge separates these two faces, so we put an edge there. And similarly, we continue going around here. And then all of these outer edges, so by the way, this graph in pink is called a wheel. Um, this is the um, six wheel and so all of these outer edges are going to connect to this infinite face now this doesn't look very good this picture in black 
But you can sort of see what's happening here, right? You've got this six cycle on the inside, and then there's a vertex that connects to every single vertex inside that six cycle. So we can think about the dual. We take the six cycle from the inside over there. And now instead of drawing this vertex on the outside in the infinite face, we can just sort of invert this thing and draw it on the inside and now connect it to every single vertex. So it turns out actually that this graph in pink is something called self-dual because if G is isomorphic to its dual, then we call G self-dual. So you can see that the graph in pink and the graph in black are isomorphic to each other. So that makes this a self-dual graph. Okay, so let's do one more of these, practicing making the dual. Um, so you may want to pause and try and draw this one yourself. Okay, again, we go, we put a vertex in every face, and then one in the infinite face, right? So this edge, this edge, this one, this one, this one, this one, and then this is going to be connected to all four of these vertices. Okay, so if we clean this up a little bit, um, we can see that, I mean, we can just clean it up just a, a tad, but we'll leave the general shape the same. So there might be a better way to draw this, but this will be fine for our purposes, right? So this is the two triangles that sort of meet with a parallel pair, and then we've got this one vertex that goes to everything else. So here's G dual. Now, it's worth commenting um, that if I were to take the dual of this graph, right, well, whenever you use this process, you should end up with another planar embedding, right? G dual shouldn't have any edge crossings. You should be able to draw it like this with no crossings. And if I take the, the dual of this graph, I should get right back to my original. So if I take the dual and then I take the dual again, I should just be getting this U, this these two have a unique relationship, right? There's only one dual graph for this graph in orange, and it's the one in black, and there's only one dual graph for the one in black, and it's the one in orange. Okay, <clears throat> so I also want to just mention the Euler characteristic. So the Euler characteristic of a graph, whoops, the Euler characteristic of a graph is given by the formula the vertices of the graph minus the edges of the graph plus the faces of the graph. So of course you need an embedding to be able to talk about the faces of a graph. Um, and so you might want to go back and just sort of think about what's happening in each of these graphs. Uh, if you want to rewind the video and go back to before they're all drawn over, you might think about what this is um, for all of these graphs. So just as an example for this orange graph, vertices minus edges plus faces. Well, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven vertices. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten edges and five faces. Seven minus ten plus five, two. Okay, let's just go ahead and do it for this one as well. So vertices minus edges plus faces. Vertices, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven vertices. Edges, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, twelve edges. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven faces. Two. Okay, so. It was two here, it was two here, and if you think about in the dual graph what's going to happen, this, the number of edges is going to be the same because every old edge corresponds to one new edge, and the number of vertices and faces swap, right? Because every face we put in a vertex, and you can check that in this picture, right, there's an orange vertex inside every black face, right? 
So the vertices and faces would just swap, so that number is going to stay the same. And it turns out that the Euler characteristic of every connected planar graph is always 2. If you take the vertices minus the edges plus the faces, you get 2. And this is true, right, whether you're dealing with the dual graph or not, because, right, you're basically just swapping out these two pieces. Okay, so that is how you find the dual of a planar embedding. Um, and graph duality is sort of a big deal. Um, duality is really nice property to have in mathematics when you, when you have it. Um, and there are a lot of things that are dual in mathematics. So this is the dual of a planar graph.